Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and I want to go over the lab write-up for the constant velocity lab that we did in AP Physics. One of the things that will help you um, clearly describe your procedures will be to include a simple diagram like this one. I shared in the announcements a website called Vector Paint, and what it does is let you just quickly throw some shapes out there and arrange them. It doesn't take long to produce the drawing this way. So that's one tip a tip I have for you guys. All right, let's talk about the procedures. When you're writing your procedures, it should read like a recipe, a step-by-step. -step. Here's what you take, these are the ingredients, and then the first thing you do is this, and then the next thing is this, and then the next thing is this. You need to check this and measure this. So that's kind of how it should go. It shouldn't read like a narrative where you're describing what your team did. Uh, also be careful about specifying really, really specific numbers like 2.7449 meters for a distance. Uh, use general terms so that the procedure can be duplicated but not down to a ten thousandth of a meter. And then also be sure you're separating the procedures from your observations. This is not the place where we need to talk about where errors were resulting in your um, data collection. But you may want to highlight, be careful here because you may see some error, blah, blah, blah. You could give the uh, person reading your procedure a heads up about potential problems. This is a good example and my little picture here drifted off. I wanted to show you this, okay? So here you can see it's numbered in a list. This is my preference. Uh, it makes it much easier to follow and it makes it much easier to understand what you're asking us to do. This one, even though it has all of the information in it, uh, it is difficult to dissect what you're asking us to do. I prefer bulleted lists or numbers be sure you understand what your teachers are looking for. This is what I'm looking for is a numbered list or bulleted list. This looks really nice. This was from someone's lab report. Much easier to understand what you have to do step by step. All right, let's talk about data tables a little bit. Uh, you have two kinds of data tables. The data tables that have everything you collected later when we move into formal lab reports. This will be an appendix. Uh, but in the case of your data analysis, you need to provide the information that the scatter plots are coming from. So to see those two, this is an example of the data that was collected. So this is the raw data from the group. And in this one, you can see on the left side, this is the data that the chart is being pulled from. Uh, I would prefer that you separate this table and this chart so that they can still be viewed easily. You can see when you copy and paste this in, uh, you get a little bit of fuzziness right here when you're reading. Let's talk about scatter plots a little bit. Make sure you get titles and appropriate access labels. You need to make sure you have clear data points displayed. You need to make sure that your scales are meaningful. And when we're using Excel, it takes care of this for us. But whenever we start doing these by hand, you need to be conscientious about how to set up your scales. Uh, when you're graphing on paper, you want to make sure that you use as much of the paper as possible. If your graph is smaller than about half a page, it gets real difficult to see the trends that you're, that may be showing up in your data. Also include a best fit line, and if you're using your calculators or Excel, include the equation and the R square value. And then keep in mind your slope should mean something. In this lab, the slope should be telling us the average of all of your trial data or velocity that's what you should be seeing. So here is a nice uh, little graph. Um, this was a nice screenshot. You can see where it says chart area right here. That's because they were had selected it or had the mouse pointing at it when they took the picture. 
and it just captured that so be careful that your snapshots are clean but even then you can still see we have a nice title we have good axis labels we clearly see the data points we see the trend line and we see the equation when the, with the r square value so this looks pretty good talking about error percent now you need to be sure to show me the formula you used the substituted values and what the error percent actually was. In a high school lab we should be able to get under 10% every time if we do our data collection properly and conscientiously. So these were a little bit high. We're going to explore why later in class. Uh, most of them were in the 20% plus range. Uh, also if you use numbers that don't occur in the provided data you need to explain where these, these come from. I had several lab reports that were pulling uh, averages but those didn't appear anywhere other than in the substitution. I didn't know where those numbers were coming from. Also when you're talking about your error analysis and you're talking about human error you need to clearly specify what this human did. I had several that just said, due to human error, this happened or that happened, and I need to know what the problem was. Usually this relates to something that was difficult to measure or a moment of uncertainty when you really weren't sure what a specific value was. This is a really nice presentation of error percent. You can see that they have the uh, formula and then the substituted values that were easy to find in the report and their final error percent at 15.69 percent this is one of the better uh, results that we saw I would prefer maybe a little space between these uh, just a note in the future when you are referring to formulas uh, take an example from this online text that shows when you have an equation it should be isolated it should be on its own line it should be centered uh, that's nice if you can do that they made it a different color and it's separated by space from the text so it's a good idea to follow uh, something like this when you're showing here's our formula our formula is velocity divided by uh, or velocity is distance divided by time so I should see V equals V divided by P isolated from the rest of your text so that it's clear that it is a formula. It's just a tip. Okay, observations. You were supposed to define velocity and then explain if your velocity was constant or not and prove it with your data. And I do appreciate the courage that one of my students showed because they said our data doesn't show that velocity was constant. And that took a lot of courage to say that. You also need to prove it with your data. You can't just make the statement. You need to prove it with information that you've already talked about. A really good model to follow for this is something you may have learned back in fifth grade. It's called CER. This is Claim, Evidence, and Reasoning, and this is a solid way of communicating scientific ideas. So you make a claim, you list your evidence, and then your reasoning is explaining how your evidence proves your claim. If you follow this model, you should be in pretty good shape on paragraph responses on your AP Physics 1 test. Uh, be sure that when you are providing information that your data is consistent throughout from procedure through data analysis through error percent calculation and conclusion. Uh, this is a cut from one lab report where they used their error percent uh, calculation was using velocities in the threes and then here at the end they're explaining that their velocities were 11 and 4 and 4 and 5 and 4 so we see a disconnect between the calculation and the data analysis or the observations at the end so be careful to make sure your information is consistent throughout your report this is easy to overlook proofreading is really important Definitely the best title. Also, be careful in your lab reports. Stick to System International. Uh, you should be giving all of your units, your measurements in units like centimeters, 
in meters per second and seconds used system international in this case uh, we were they switched from inches to centimeters be careful to make sure you understand that inches are not centimeters you cannot interchange these if you do that it gets to be very expensive so that's just a quick overview of what i'm looking for in lab write-ups and i hope you find this helpful